What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and part two of the most haunted hotels in America. In the first half, we talked about the Weinkauf Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia, the Oxford in Denver, Colorado, the Chicago Plaza in Chicago, Illinois, the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas, and the Sorrento in Seattle, Washington. These are obviously not in any particular order. They're hard to gauge which one is creepier. I'm just going with the ones I feel are interesting. There are probably others that are more famous, and there is, but, you know, they've been overdone to death on YouTube, so I thought I'd grab some maybe lesser known ones that are still extra creepy. That's what this list is all about. But like I said in the intro of part one of this video series, more often than not, hauntings are in homes, hotels, inns, and brothels for some reason. You never hear about a bus stop or an outhouse being haunted. Could you imagine a ghost showing up while you're in a porta potty? I mean, the smell is bad enough, and now you got some ghost in there with you? I have a hard time peeing if someone stands in the stall next to me in a public restroom already. I might have the worst case of shrinkage if all of a sudden a ghost showed up. Out of all the things that get haunted, hotels are always the best and have the greatest backstories and legends, it seems. We're going to take a look at the next five right now. Number five, the Queen Anne Hotel in San Francisco, California. This hotel is a historic 1890s Victorian mansion. It was originally a girls boarding school and for some reason survived the 1906 earthquake that leveled most of the city. The headmistress of the school back in the early 1900s was a woman named Mary Lake. Some believe she's still there and unaware that she's dead and out of a job. The headmistress is said to haunt her former office in room 410. People who have stayed in the room say she makes tapping noises and periodically plays the piano and adjusts things in the room. She pulls the hair and shirts of some of the staff and is often seen checking her hair and makeup in the mirror on the second floor. Some have reported that their clothes were unpacked for them, while others have woken up during the middle of the night to find that their blankets are tucked neatly around them. The hotel's paranormal history was explored in an episode of the television show Haunted Hotels, among other things. There's all kinds of ghost hunter type things that have gone on in this place. The hotel was originally called Miss Mary Lake's School for Girls. Nine years after the school opened, the building was sold and turned into a very secretive and exclusive gentleman's club. After 12 years of being a gentleman's club, the building was again sold to a church and became the Girls Friendly Society Lodge. Don't know what went on there, but had something to do with lodging girls, I imagine. In 1980, a private company purchased the rundown building, restoring it and opening it again in 1995 as the Queen Anne Hotel. The hotel now has 48 rooms and is decorated nice, the turn of the century, design, comfort, elegance, the whole thing. As legend goes, Miss Mary Lake haunts the hotel so nobody turns it into a gentleman's club again. Number four, the Mayflower Hotel, Washington, D.C. The Mayflower is the largest luxury hotel in the District of Columbia, and it's also the longest continuously operated hotel in the D.C. area. The Mayflower is known as the Hotel of Presidents, and it's also known as the second best address in Washington, D.C., the first being the White House. Harry S. Truman actually stayed in this hotel the first 90 days of his presidency. The Mayflower Hotel opened up on February 18, 1925. Strange things have gone on in this hotel since forever, but most of the paranormal happenings seem to be tied to one event, the inauguration of President Calvin Coolidge. Coolidge didn't attend his own inaugural ball in 1925 because he was mourning the death of his 16-year-old son. The 16-year-old Coolidge died of blood poisoning six months earlier. He was playing tennis with his brother at the White House and got a blister on his toe. The blister got infected so bad that he passed away a week after the deadly tennis match. Every year since 1937, on January 20th, Inauguration Day, the lights in the Grand Ballroom flicker and dim around 10 p.m. That's the time the first guests were announced at Coolidge's inauguration. The hotel staff have reported finding plates of hors d'oeuvres and a glass of wine in the Grand Ballroom balcony. Neither item had been served at any function on that day. And one of the elevators refuses to move from the 8th floor to the lobby level at 10.15 p.m. That's about the time Coolidge would have arrived at the ballroom from his holding room. They're not sure what it's all about. They've never really seen a ghost or anything like that. They don't know if it's the ghost of his son. They don't know if it's the ghost of Calvin Coolidge. But it's just a really weird happening. You'd think they'd be able to figure it out pretty easy, though. But I guess they ain't trying. The hors d'oeuvres don't show up every year. That's another thing I found out. It's just periodically, every couple of years or so. Number three. 
the Otisaga Resort in Cooperstown, New York. This resort was built in 1909 and has been owned and operated by the same family its entire existence. The hotel opens each year in mid-April and closes after Thanksgiving. It has 135 rooms on the shores of Otsego Lake. The Otisaga also has two restaurants and an 18-hole golf course, so it's a proper resort on a beautiful lake. Like so many resorts in places that can see harsh winters, it shuts down for the winter. Back in the day, during those winter months, it became a school for girls. What they did with the girls the rest of the year, I don't know. But when it was snowing, this is where they housed the girls. Now, it's been reported over the years that a giggling gaggle of girls still echoes through the third floor hallway, even when there's no children checked into the hotel at all. They hear it. This has been reported so many times over the years that it finally brought the sci-fi channel's Ghost Hunters, their TV show, out to investigate the property several years back. Using all their ghost hunting technology, they confirmed more than a few things. The presence of shadowy figures whispering ghosts, mysterious bumpings, curtains fluttering in closed rooms, all kinds of weird stuff, and things moving back and forth down the hallways, darting from room to room. Rooms on the second, third, and fifth floors were deemed to be hot spots for haunting shenanigans. Another common experience among the guests staying on the fifth floor is hearing what sounds like furniture being slid across the floor in the room above them. When they inquire about these activities and call the, you know, the front desk and all that, they're informed that there is no sixth floor, and the only thing above them is a roof. After spending the night here and worrying about being attacked by ghost teenagers, you could visit the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. Yeah, it's that Coopertown. It's right here in Coopertown, New York. What I find strange about this one is the resort has had these reports many, many times over many years. It's not just, you know, the occasional one. This seems like an ongoing thing, and a lot of people see and hear things at this resort. Other ones, you know, just periodically you hear things about the happenings in the hotel. This one seems very consistent. Number 2. Malaga Inn, Mobile, Alabama Built in 1862, this historic property is in the Deep South and just smacks of the Civil War era. It has 39 rooms, Victorian furniture, an outdoor courtyard, and is considered the most haunted hotel in Alabama. Guests have reported seeing the ghost of a woman dressed all in white pacing the balcony of room 007. Yes, 007, like James Bond. Some have reported that she'll stop and slowly point out to nothing, just pointing, raising her hand very slowly just kind of standing there for a minute. Kind of weird. That room has a swinging chandelier that's not supposed to be swinging, lights that turn themselves on, and even furniture that eerily moves about the room on its own. Originally, this was two homes that were constructed by two brothers as wedding gifts for two sisters in their family. They remained in the family until they were purchased in the 1960s and turned into a hotel. Some believe the woman on the balcony in 007 is one of the sisters. What she's pointing at, nobody knows. The hotel has tunnels that run under the two buildings, and they may have something to do with the hotel's paranormal events. The current owner believes the tunnels were used by Confederate soldiers to hide during the war, and their comings and goings are responsible for the mysterious movements of the beds and furniture around the hotel. I read one other thing that they think these tunnels were part of the Underground Railroad and hid slaves in there and stuff like that as they moved about and got away from whoever owned them. It's kind of weird. Kind of an eerie thing. Seeing a woman standing on a balcony like that, pointing. Freaks me out. All right, before we get into number one, I know some of you will want to say that I missed some good ones. I did. Some because they've been done to death on YouTube, and others because I plan on doing a second set of ten next month. Gotta save a couple ringers for that one, right? All right, here we go. And number one, the Stanley Hotel, Estes Park, Colorado. Most ghost and creepy stuff enthusiasts consider the Stanley Hotel in Colorado as the most haunted hotel in America. The Stanley is best known for inspiring Stephen King's book The Shining after the author stayed one night in the winter of 1974. After writing Carrie and Salem's Lot, Mr. Scary book writer Stephen King decided he needed some new surroundings for inspiration for his next book. He opened up a giant map to the U.S. on his kitchen table and randomly pointed to a location on that map, turned out being Boulder, Colorado. So off he went. On October 30th, 1974, King and his wife checked into the Stanley Hotel in nearby Estes Park, Colorado. They were the only two guests in the hotel that night, and I guess he was inspired enough because he got a really good book out of it. 
Probably one of his best, in my opinion. In 1909, the hotel was originally built to house traveling upper-class city folk. This was a very upscale joint that provided servants to all their visitors, and it is now haunted. The stories about the many sightings range from the original owner to employees to guests. Everyone's equal in the afterlife, I guess, at the Stanley Hotel. The old hotel was built in the early 1900s by F.O. Stanley, who created the Stanley Steam Engine, a steam-powered horseless carriage. Basically, it's one of the original automobiles. Freeland, Oscar Stanley, F.O., and his wife Flora traveled west to Colorado in 1903 because F.O. Stanley's doctor advised him to seek fresh mountain air. He suffered from tuberculosis. This is an amazing hotel that's seen many good years. The hotel is alleged to be one of the first in the country to be fully electrified. Like I said, upscale. This place is filled to the rim with stories of all kinds of paranormal activities, like Elizabeth Wilson. In the 1920s, a gas leak led to an explosion in room 217 that nearly killed a chambermaid named Elizabeth Wilson. She recovered and returned to her job, which she held until her death at the ripe old age of 90. Soon after that, the hotel started receiving reports of a ghostly chambermaid hovering and walking through closed doors around where the 1920 explosion happened. Unmarried couples sharing a bed complained of an invisible force wedging them apart as they slept, and single men often wake up to find their bags had been packed and left outside the door. The most notable spirit is F.O. Stanley himself. He is often seen in the lobby and the billiard room, which apparently the billiard room was his favorite place to be when he was still alive, and, and it appears to be his favorite room in death. Flora Stanley also haunts the hotel, continuing to entertain guests with her piano playing in the ballroom. There's all kinds of other stories here. Look it up. I, I can't even do it justice in this video. All right, so that is today's list. It is part two of the most haunted hotels. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I want to do another one. If we get enough likes and enough views on this one, I'll do it next month. If not, we'll wait till, I don't know, October when things get spooky again. Anyway, if you like what we're doing here, feel free to subscribe. Give the video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.